who's going to come up here is the person who is probably most likely in this room to make me a little bit weak in the knees. <laughs> and, and it's Christina de Castell, Chief Librarian of Vancouver Public Library. Christina has been a member of the Canadian Urban Libraries Council eBook Task Force since its beginning. She sees opportunities for each of us to advocate for library patrons and our values in our digital collection negotiations and enjoys discovering shared objectives across libraries. about 2010 and what we have on that task force we have librarians from across the country so including Ryan Hadzia from Greater Victoria Public Library as well as from Edmonton from Mississauga from Hamilton from Toronto so lots of uh, lots of Ontario representation and from Ottawa and we started talking about the need for principles for licensing digital content because we recognized through some conversations happening with vendors in Ontario specifically, that there were libraries that didn't have written licenses with their vendors. And that meant that things were coming up that were being renegotiated by the vendors on the fly that were quite unexpected, like who was actually covered for the license. So we realized that we needed to start talking about what is a best practice, what needs to be in a license, and also really making a point that you need your license to be written down and both parties <laughs> need to sign it. And that seems really obvious, but it's not how vendors are operating right now. So something that's happening and that we're seeing more and more is that you'll get a license that makes a reference to user terms that are provided on a website that a vendor can update any time. And that's not okay. And um, as Jay mentioned, something I really believe in is that we are all advocates for making our environment better for users and for making our products better for users, for protecting their privacy and their personal information. So each of us in our regular meetings with our vendors when they're coming to talk to us about new products has an opportunity to talk about what matters to us in advocating for our users and to, to try and make these shifts happen. And we work at it really hard to, at Vancouver Public Library, and so we want to enlist everyone uh, in this effort to get, to get personal information protected well, to make sure licenses are written down, and to have those expectations met. I'm going to give another shot to my slides. Since they're sitting here on the desktop, you think they'd be easy to find. <coughs> are available on the Canadian Urban Libraries Council website. So I'm just going to skim the surface of some of the key points today, and then I hopefully I'll have a couple of minutes so that you guys can ask questions if you have them. So intention here um, is to support you in being advocates for your libraries and your users, and to be also a tool for when you have a, a person in your organization that's new to doing digital licensing, to have a bit of a, an overview of what are the areas that you need to understand before you go into a conversation with a vendor around a license 
or when you're dealing with something for the first time. So it really can be a helpful tool for thinking about what a new digital collections uh, librarian or library tech needs to know. So that's part of what we wanted to achieve here. So first one up, privacy and data protection. I know that Scott and Alyssa are going to talk about this a little bit more in their session. Main things in the licensing principles that we should be limiting data collection to the absolute minimum of what's necessary to operate the system. And we sometimes see when library systems are asking us to use SIP for authentication, for example, that they're sharing more data than they need to. So that's uh, where this one came from. We also should be encouraging, if a library user is gonna have to share more information, create an account that's direct with the vendor, that we have their consent to do that. We remind them that they have an option to, to share this information. Of course, that's an option that is only that they don't get to use the product if they say no. And so that's why it's important that we actually do that advocacy beforehand to make sure it's the bare minimum that they're being asked to share. So that comes back to our legal and our ethical obligations about privacy. We as libraries care about these things and sometimes our users don't know they should care. I think there are many groups that are starting to become more aware of the amount of personal information that's being shared. The European data protection regulations are helping in that area to raise awareness about how much information is being collected and shared. But on the whole, we need to do some of this work on behalf of our users. And then we also need to educate them about what the vendors are asking them to agree to. So making sure that you're directing them to where they can learn more about the privacy agreements. Next section is copyright, everyone's favorite topic. Uh, so we don't have to deal with copyright very much in public libraries. It's a big part of academic libraries, of school libraries. They're doing a lot more copying on behalf of their, uh, their students, their patrons. Uh, for public libraries, it's a little bit less prominent. But what we don't tend to think about is that when we sign a license, sometimes we're actually signing away rights the government intended us to have. And so that's what we need to be looking for in our licenses is that the, the things that our policymakers have decided we should be able to do, we don't give away in the process of signing an agreement. And the things that can get given away, the most important one is the fair dealing for research and private study. Your user should always be able to print or download a copy of a, of a piece of information that's not the entire work that they are going to use for research and private study. So this is, this is an important right that we have as individuals and it's not something that we should be giving away. So those, those digital products where you can't actually print anything, we need the right to, to be making those, those prints of parts of the data that's in there. The other exceptions are for education, parody and satire under fair dealing, perhaps a little bit less relevant in the case of these digital licenses. Usually in an academic or a college or an, or an education library, there'd be a license for in digital content that allows the sharing with all of the different people who need access. Libraries ourselves also have exceptions and limitations in copyright that allow us to do things like interlibrary loan. So we are permitted in the Copyright Act to do anything on behalf of another library's user that we could do for our own user. That means that we should be able to interlibrary loan things that we have in our digital collections. Most of us at this stage cannot. So this one is typically given away in a license. And this is a hard one to negotiate. Publishers are really resistant. And the, the last one that I wanted to mention is that libraries should be permitted to bypass technological protection measures, otherwise known as DRM or digital locks, for exercising permitted exceptions. Permitted exceptions, the one that we're allowed to bypass right now, the, the most well-known one, and the one the co-op would be exercising, um, is the one for people with perceptual disabilities. So this is one that's actually allowed. You can bypass a digital lock right now in order to produce content for someone with a perceptual disability. That came under the Marrakesh Treaty Amendments to Canada's Copyright Act. But there are many other reasons why libraries should be able to make copies, for example, for preservation uh, that are not currently permitted, you're not currently permitted to bypass that, that uh, technological protection measure. So, we try to address some of this by identifying in our licenses, are they trying to restrict something that we should be able to do? And we actually encountered a license at Vancouver Public Library recently where they forgot to put in anything we were allowed to do. So they told us all the things we weren't allowed to do, 
and they forgot to put in the line where they, they it said, with the exception of the things identified in section one, and there was nothing in section one about what you were going to do. So an interesting problem. Obviously, they intended that the user would be able to view the content, um, but they hadn't included that as a permitted use. So we assume our vendors are producing licenses that make sense. We can't make that assumption. You really need to read every line of your license, as tedious as that is. I've also recently, um, we, didn't, we haven't covered it in the licensing principles yet, but we will. Uh, we saw a request that the library take on liability and indemnify the vendor for anything that the user might do to violate the license. Watch out for that. You don't want to be taking on liability for your user's activity but by your library. If you had legal counsel, they'd be saying, don't do this. Um, most of us probably aren't having our licenses reviewed by legal counsel. So just a, a note to watch out for this, um, this type of clause, which tends to come buried in the, the sections around liability and indemnification at the end of a license. So next up, we have the uh, accessibility section. So I'm encouraging all of you to look for what's uh, included from an accessibility standpoint <laughs> in your products and in your licenses. So what is available should be clearly stated. It may or may not be stated in the license, but, but this is something we should be looking for in our products. We should be looking for compliance with standards or legislation. We should be looking for end user support for accessibility features. And often we, we buy accessible content, but you can't get to it because the interface isn't accessible. So this is something to really be paying attention to. And, and then these features shouldn't be limited or blocked. So, so this is something that we see um, we're seeing a lot in the early days of the Amazon Kindle, for example, where it should have been able to read the content out loud, but it couldn't because that was disabled. So looking for those things. The, license, the Coke Licensing Principles document, which is just two pages long, has links for further details, for best practice guides and that sort of thing. So you don't need to get just this one bullet point of information on this. If it's something you want to learn more about, we put in links so that you can learn more. And then we've covered a few uh, a few other items around additional terms. So documentation, documentation and training materials provided at no additional cost. So do ask for this. If you need to be able to train people on how to do something in your library, sometimes they'll say that you can't download something um, but you need to, in your library, but you need to be able to download it in your library. Or something that you need to be able to do in order to train staff, asking for access for staff is important, and even if they don't live in your jurisdiction, for example. There should be pre, free primary technical support and a reasonable cost for advanced technical support, so we're looking for that in your licenses. Counter compliance for statistics, so that when we are reporting things, we're all reporting things that are comparable. Access for in-library, off-site, and mobile use. This is one where we really have to be pushing harder on the products being device agnostic and having responsive interfaces right now, or be it having mobile-friendly interfaces. Everyone is using the library on their phones, which I think we all know. And we're not seeing universally that uh, digital collection vendors are ensuring that mobile, mobile access is done well. So we really need to keep pushing on that. And then easy authentication. Uh, single sign-on is a bit of a dream, but I think we have to keep working uh, on trying to achieve that. And, uh, and finally, that we have practices for changes and service interruptions so that you know how much you should expect this product to be available. And that there's something in there that watches for how much of the content can change. So some of these databases have a lot of content from a lot of publishers. And there's nothing actually written into the agreements that says, well, what if they lost their licenses for 80% of the content and you were still obligated to pay the fee for the whole collection that you'd had when you signed the license? <coughs> so thinking about what are the terms there to make sure that what you pay for and what you have at the end of the year are actually roughly comparable products. So things for you to know as next steps. You can access the whole two-page document. We really did try to keep it concise on the Canadian Urban Libraries Council website. And you can help to advance these principles. And so that means talking to your colleagues. We, as an ebook e task force, which I'm not on anymore, but um, I've handed that over to, uh, to Kate Cahill 
at Vancouver Public Library, but the rest of the members remain the same. Uh, so they are working on presenting at a variety of provincial conferences. So we spoke at the Ontario Library Association in January or, or early February, and, um, and they've also talked in Alberta, and so people will keep talking about this. I'm sharing it internationally with the International Federation of Library Associations, IFLA, eLending Working Group, and, and of course, we want to be talking about this with our vendors. And that's really the most important thing, is for each of you to be sh taking one of these things on as a thing you want to champion and pushing that forward every time you have a con conversation with a vendor. Sometimes it feels like we're not getting anywhere, but we do get somewhere when we are consistent with our messaging and we keep on trying and we talk about it every time. We've changed a lot of things in the ebook world over the past eight years. And, and we, we do have the power to, to make these other things get better over time as well. So those were the, the points that I wanted to make, and I have saved myself three and a half minutes to take your questions. <laughs> if you have any. Yeah? So sometimes, um, authentication, I, I, I agree, um, easy authentication is really important. Thank you. Easy authentication is really important, as is protection of privacy, and those two things don't always go hand in hand. So that's, I think, something to look out for. I, I, we have an easy authentication method, and it means there's things we miss out being able to have, which to me sounds complete craziness, but it um, seems to be the situation. Yeah, it, it really is a challenge, and what the one that worries me the most is that the sign-on with Facebook or Google, the, those types of authentication methods, that means that there's information being shared with Facebook or Google about what someone is using at their library. So the easiest method might not be the best one for us to offer to our patrons, but there are other choices out there, and I'm not going to get into this one too much because it is the next topic up on the agenda. Okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe stupid question, but I'm just curious. Like, when we're all kind of um, getting these licenses going, wouldn't it be kind of nice if we could talk to one another about each other's experience with that vendor? And sometimes one library may find that there's this, you know, like missing link in the in the contract, or another library doesn't. And it'd be kind of nice if we could all just have a list that we could kind of talk to different libraries that were basically going ahead the same licensing as we were. Or is that more the... So I'm going to suggest this is really what the licensing BFG is for. Okay. Um, and certainly something that we used to talk about on it in its early days. So for whoever your liaison is, uh, on behalf of the licensing business function group <laughs> that I'm not on, um, I would suggest that whoever your liaison is to it, uh, that you that you give them the, the topic, what it is you want, what, what you're negotiating, and, and or what the, who the vendor is you're talking to, and what the issues are that you, that are coming up. And I can't see Jennifer, but I know she's in here. Yes. <laughs> Jennifer, are you willing to uh, be a forum for yes. this conversation? Yeah, I'm, make, I'm making notes, and we, we can certainly, Great. We can certainly raise that. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone.